Next one, she already know EJX took place last week from Thursday to Sunday, and we got more footage and information regarding Sonic Frontiers. Obviously, I played the demo too. You can check out my review here. It's hit 60k views. Nonetheless, we got more information to talk about new footage and more people who played the demo and got further than I did, because remember, it's a 15 minute demo with a tutorial section that's mandatory. So the amount of the actual game you get to play depends on how fast you speed run the tutorial, essentially. So those who played several times were able to get further than me, who only played two times. So we're gonna get to all this right now. But if you subscribed to the channel already, please make sure to subscribe. We're trying to hit 100,000 subscribers and hopefully 7,000 subscribers before Sonic Frontiers comes out. But before we get into all the new information, <laughs> there's something we gotta address, okay? In my last video, I talked about the diamond structure, which was a nice little platforming segment, which you can check out in that video. And I said I was mad at Sega for hiding this footage because it's in the open zone, but not in any of the trailers, like in any significant capacity or anything like that, which kind of pissed me off. I'm like, why are they hiding all the good gameplay? And I have to address this because it's just pissing me off. The fan squad was getting mad at me for criticizing Sega's shit marketing of this game, right? <laughs> Saying that they don't want to spoil the mystery or some bullshit like that, but I'm being entitled because I wanted them to show good gameplay, even though it's a 30 hour game. Double that if you want to 100%, but 30, 20 to 30 hour game. And me asking to see a little bit of the first island when there's five islands showing, asking to show more significant platforming is being entitled. When there's companies out here releasing two to five hour long demos. I covered fucking Cyberpunk, five hour demo. F I didn't actually play the full five hours because I couldn't be bothered, but five hour demo that's available on PlayStation. Like, people are dropping big demos for open world games. We're not talking about forces, right? I'm not saying they got to drop five hours. I'm just saying that asking to see a bit more of the first island is not being entitled. You can't say that their marketing has been good. I, I refuse to believe you actually believe that shit. And do you know why? Because some of my most viewed Sonic Frontiers videos are the videos where I'm showing potato quality leaks from Gamescom. Because people want to see the game. So you can't be like in my comment section, oh, their marketing is fine. Meanwhile, you rush into my videos with the potato quality leaks because you know you want to see more of the game. If we had actually just gotten what they wanted us to see, which was just the trailers, and remember they didn't want anyone to film at any of these events. If they had gotten their way and cameras stopped working in the events, no one recorded anything, we would not know that much about what the game actually feels like. We wouldn't know. Okay, like, let me search this shit right now. Sonic Frontiers. Then we're gonna sort by most viewed video. And then as you can see here, one of the most, I don't this is prime, probably Frontiers was in like a tag or something, which is why it showed up. And then this was like, this is before we even got gameplay. <laughs> and then that's Origins. But yeah, all gameplay leaks. This was potato quality. This was what was getting the views. This was what was getting the views. Potato, let me remind you how potato quality it was. They was, they, where were they? Where, where, where was Frontiers? It was like in the corner somewhere. Okay, look, yeah, they was like, no, don't film anything. All you people were showing up to look at this, to look at this. So to say that they showed enough, when even EGX, most of the info we got was from footage that we weren't supposed to be taking. We couldn't even see the HUD. Look at the Sky Sanctuary footage we was getting. Look at this shit. Okay, it's only recently that the critics started getting some Sky Sanctuary footage. And of course the critics play like us, so we wanted to see the actual fans play. But I was just trying to make a point, okay, literally. This, it, it, it. When Sonic fans see the forces model in front of it, what is this? That's not even, hold on. Oh, 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 that's not even, that's cap, that's not, that was from the first movie trailer with the ugly Sonic, that had nothing to do with the Forces model, people always capping on my name, I didn't even react to the Forces model like that, I was chill, I said it was ugly, but we'll mod it out anyway, anyway, let me get to the, let me get to the topic at hand right now, anyway, go play fast, or GPF for short, if you remember the Lost World modding era, he was making a lot of these Lost World mods that I was covering. If you remember Premier Remy back in the mid 2010s, I was the Lost World modding king. Well, not I didn't actually make any mods in terms of 
who was covering the most of them. That was me. Okay, just putting that out there. Those of you who remember, you remember that shit. Anyway, he's got some new footage. Says Sonic Frontiers breakdowns cutscene and full squid boss fight. So we're gonna take a look at this right now. And there's no music, it's just forces music, so we're not actually gonna put the music on there. But yeah, there's a breakdowns cutscene. Some people are saying it's inspired by Sonic Rush's cutscene. I don't know if it's that exact one, but yeah. We got this little Amy cutscene over here with a Coco with a flower. And yeah, talk to Amy. So we'll take a look at this footage. Make sure to check out Gotta Play Fast, of course, if you want to see the original footage. And you can see that's the, the big Titan boss, I think. And then Sage shows up. Let me just confirm there's no yeah, there's no there's no sound. It's just forces music in the background. So yeah, once again, potato quality, and you lot are watching because you want to see the game. If you if you if you thought the marketing was great, we'd need to be looking at this. I'm just putting that out there. But anyway, look at that Titan boss. My god, let me hold on. Let me take a look at that shit again. Let me take a look at that shit again. Hold on. That shit's looking crazy. Yeah, look at that. That shit is huge. So what are you supposed to do here? Because he just fell to the ground. I guess you have to be super to, to face that one. So, okay, he's home and attacking the rocks. All right. Home and attacks the rocks. And he gets there. Then he does some attacks. He thinks he's doing something. Then the cutscene hits, and then it's like, get the fuck out of here. The fuck do you think this is? Yeet! Out of here. You're out of here. Like some. some, some I can't even speak. I was going to say some Scatoony shit. But, you know, dude out of here, like, <laughs> yeah, he can't fight. He needs to be super for that shit. Yeah, that's what's up. And Sage coming to brag. <laughs> I told y'all to stay away from this motherfucking area. What the fuck you doing here, bitch? Don't come back till you sound like Jason Griffith. I'm joking. I'm joking. Fuck. People gonna get mad at me for that one. But yeah, there's no sound, so... Obviously, because we're wearing headphones at the demo. We've got some little text here. Uh, I'm not taking that thing down the traditional way. I'm going to need the Chaos Emerald and maybe a little bit of luck. Okay. Pretty interesting. All right. So, acknowledging that he can't do shit without Super Sonic. We pretty much knew this, but seeing it is pretty interesting. Yeah. All right. So, then we get to see the full squid boss fight. All right. Let's take a look at that then. Collect these heart what is it? What did it say there? It said collect these heart shaped items, Amy's memory tokens to free Amy. Amy's memory tokens can be obtained by exploring the island, fishing, and with Psy loop. Alright. that animation is still fucking weird. I don't know why that is a thing. Like you just just what is that? I don't, I don't even know. Hermit cocos and seeds. What what does it say there? Let me read that again. It says Fire? No, it can't be fire. Something the Hermit Coke Give the Hermit Coco and Red Seeds of Power to raise Sonic's attack and the Blue Seeds of Defense to raise Sonic's defense. Alright? So, I've already forgotten what it said. There was like a red and a blue. One is attack, one is defense. Alright, so this is the Squid Boss. We saw a little bit of this in the um, one of the trailers. Maybe even a couple of the trailers. But I'm guessing this is the full fight, so we get to see exactly what the attack pattern is. I'm guessing it's that standard, like, boost style, like, go forward, quick step, and then attack kind of boss. Yeah, nothing too crazy. Um, although, in a boss like this, I'm guessing if you lost your rings, you'd be fucked, because they'd fall behind you. So, that might actually make it tougher. Although, again, it's just quick stepping, so, I mean, you really gonna fuck that up? <laughs> I don't know. So, you run out of boost, you have to wait for the whole thing to fill up before you could use it again. So, you gotta make sure you conserve that boost. Don't let it get completely empty, you know? All right, where's the attacks at? There was, there was a whole section where there was like no attacks. All right, now it's close enough. Then you spam the attack. Well, you get one attack in, I guess. He lost his rings. Better go back and light dash those. All right. So now he stops at this area so he can keep attacking from here. That was a big home attack. That shit went long. That was like some unleash type, you know? You know when you're in the hub world and unleash, you do a jump dash and he goes from like... One corner of the hub wall to the fucking other corner because it's so fucking OP of a jump dash. Oh my god. 
All right, so more quick stepping. So yeah, pretty simple boss, just quick step and that's it. There's nothing crazy here, like, you know. So for the people saying that, you know, maybe the combat will pick up, I mean, maybe it will, but it definitely hasn't yet. You know, it looks visually impressive, but this is a quick step in section, okay? Doesn't mean I think the game will be bad. Relax your horses, okay? Keep your horses leashed, okay? Don't unleash them. All right, defeats them and he completely just falls to the ground. I don't know why they're falling, he's still walking. It's like the classic Sonic type shit. He'd be falling and still having that running animation. And then collects that portal gear. Oh yeah, I actually went on that thing, that hamster wheel thing on my demo. You just run on it for a few seconds and he gets a collectible. I forgot what collectible I actually got, but I got something there. So there's nothing crazy with that thing, but yeah. And the bubblegum enemy was over there. Um, all right, so he's just running around now. I don't know if there's anything crazy new that's going to happen after that. Fixed camera. During scenes with that display, the camera will be fixed. Oh, so you can't change the camera when that shows up. Okay, so at least they tell you. So it doesn't confuse you, you know. The Sonic games always had that issue where like there'll be scripted sections where you couldn't really do much of the camera. But you'd have to know where they are because otherwise you'd be trying to move the camera. It's like, oh, you can't do that here. You're in a locked camera section kind of thing. So I guess it's kind of cool that they warn you. Just like Generations warning you at the bottom of the pits, that sign thing, I think that was always a, a nice touch. And yeah, that's pretty much, yeah, they hit the end of the demo there. Yeah, so you can see, as I said, it's a five minute video. So obviously there would have been tutorial cut out because you have to do the tutorial every time you play the demo. But yeah, nice footage, nice little break dance. And then we've also got another thing here we need to talk about. It says, a short clip of a cutscene I got to in Sonic Frontiers where you have to talk to Amy. The time limit cut me off, but that's all I could get. Very noisy clip. So let's take a look at this cutscene. So you can see Sonic and then the glitched out Amy and then the Coco. All right. No dialogue though. We're just kind of standing there. Oh, okay, here we go. They need to find their one true love before it's too, who? Says they need to find. They talk about the Coco. This Coco says they need to find their one. Tr so the Coco got love interest now. We gotta find Coco love. They're shy to express their feelings, but if they don't do it now, they may never. They've been. T what the fuck? So we got. We gotta do matchmaker Coco. No, no millionaire matchmaker. We gotta do fucking Coco matchmaker. The fuck is this? <laughs> That's definitely gotta be a side quest. That's not some main shit, right? That's gotta be some. That's gotta be some side shit or something. But yeah, we got we got another thing we gotta take a look at. Um, we got more shit we gotta take a look at. I pressed the wrong button there. Um, what we have got to take a look at is, uh huh, yes. We actually we got two things we need to take a look at. I asked about on a community post. I asked about the difference between easy, normal, and hard difficulty for Sonic Frontiers. Now, if you don't already know. There's two sets of difficulty. You've got the general movement one, which is you can have unlimited mode where you get unlimited boost, but you're slower overall. And then you've got the high speed action mode, which is recommended for those who played Sonic games before. And that gives you a limited boost, which is what everyone's been using because it makes you faster. You've got a faster boost, but it's limited. So that's the one that all the Sonic fans have been picking. That's why you see the boost next to Sonic in the footage. Unlimited boost mode, you don't have to worry about that. But that's just for like the movement. Then you've got the combat difficulty, which can be set to easy, normal, or hard, which I've set mine to hard personally. I didn't find it hard, but I did set it too hard. But I wanted to know for those who play the demo multiple times, if any of them played on easy, normal, and hard, and were able to compare the differences. So I asked people, to those who actually play the demo, did any of you try all three difficulties for the combat to compare the difference or know someone who did? And someone here said, I know one of the guys who did try out the demo, <laughs> tried all three difficulties and said that dodging encounters aren't necessary at all in easy mode or really even the medium mode which i'm not surprised for easy mode but for medium mode that's pretty surprising even for me on hard mode i don't think i did any dodging or countering but maybe later on i'll require it but again because of the ring light dashing it wasn't really hard for me they found that attacks would happen faster from enemies on hard and he was required to dodge slightly more all the enemies weren't too hard to beat from what I heard. He also said that the supervisor EGX told in their 50 side space levels. So again, 
we talked about that in the previous video for the science space levels. Someone else said all that changes the health of enemies. That's literally it. So I mean, there's a bit of conflicting information there. He's saying that the attacks were for one person saying the attacks were faster. Someone else saying the only thing that changes the health. I asked, is it significant though? Like how many hits required for the same boss in easy versus hard, etc. And this person replied, for the ninja boss fight, normal and hard are very similar in terms of hit points. Hard maybe being a few punches more. Easy mode is fucking pathetic. Killed it in like 10 seconds. So yeah, if, you, if you're if you a Sonic fan, well, I don't want to say if you're a Sonic fan before someone goes, I want to play on easy and I'm a Sonic fan. If you're someone who wants a challenge, you can't play on easy or probably not even normal to be honest. You just got to put that shit on hard mode if you want any chance of actually dying on this combat. But yeah, we got another thing we need to talk about again. It's another comment from someone who played the demo as well and most likely got further than I did. And they were giving some little insight on some things here. So it says here, this is regarding like the movement shit, okay? We're talking about the momentum shit, the interesting shit. It says here, the boost only gets you to about 50% speed. You can only gain so much momentum from running. But if you roll downhill, that's uncapped and you can go even faster and gain even more speed. Then you have that light blue strip at the end of the speedometer, which is reserved for the blue boost, power boost. Basically, you can't just spam the boost to go fast unless you get the power boost. So if you remember, I talked about the momentum. Where was it? Over here in this video. And I think Valcomia Sonic Central had a tweet about this. And I'm going to take a look at it now. It was two tweets. This is regarding the, the ball physics because we've realized that when he's running, he doesn't go faster up or downhill, so there's no momentum involved in that. So we're trying to figure out the fastest way to traverse the environment. And it's clear that if you curl into a ball, your speed increases more than if it was running. Because this guy just this guy just said, you can only get to 50% speed when regular boosting, right? And if you look here at the speedometer, when drop dashing, you can see that he goes above the 50% mark. Then he mentions that blue area that you can't get to, so even though the rolling gets there, the true speediest way to do things is to get the power boost, which you need 400 rings for, which you can cheese that by doing the spin cycle a bunch of times. But yeah, that, the power boost is the fastest thing to do. If you don't have the power boost, then rolling will be a second fastest if you're going downhill, obviously. If you're going on a flat surface or uphill, then it wouldn't be faster. Then if that's not the case, then regular running and boosting would be the wave. On top of that, we've got more information here. It says I play the demo. I'll point out some quick things. First is that you can't uncurl from the drop dash, not with boosting, and L2 doesn't do anything yet. Jumping slows you down a bit, especially if you're moving at top speed. So as of right now, there's no reason to roll downhill because you're just going to lose that speed anyway. So I guess what they're saying here is if you go downhill with the drop dash, you are getting that boost of speed, but then once you jump, it's gonna kill that momentum anyway, so you don't get to carry that as you keep going. The drop dash also damages enemies about the same as the homing attack, except once you hit enemies with the drop dash, you just keep plowing through them. The emerald-like structure in the box art that was mentioned in the video is something I played. It's still what you'd expect difficulty-wise, but it's definitely not basic. It blends a boost stage with the open world combat. The platforming there was very speed focused in the sense that you had to react in time to jump through a hoop or grab onto a zip line, otherwise you'd fall down and have to do a slower path. Like when I was grinding on rails, I missed the jump through the dash rings, so instead I had to run up the wall. Another time I managed to grab a zip line in time and it gave me some air time. If you're too slow, you fall down and have to go through a loop, but if you're fast enough, you can skip that and land on the upper path that said loop takes you to. One part takes you inside to fight about 10 to 20 enemies, and after that, you're back outside for more platforming. So that's about the diamond structure. So it's clear there's a bit more depth in there. Like, if you do it properly, you take the higher route. If you suck, you take the slower, lower route. So a lot of information here. It's looking good for Sonic Frontiers right now. Um, Again, I'm not happy about that momentum being killed with the drop dash if you, like, jump afterwards. It's clear the drop dash momentum is, like, the best momentum in the game. But everything surrounding it is not heavily momentum based. But you can pull off certain like incline jumps if you've got the boost or the power boost. We've seen that that can be pulled off. Whether it's going to be useful in terms of shortcuts, we'll have to see once we see the full game or whatever. But yeah, Volunteers is looking all right right now. Uh, let me know what you guys think about all of this information. Are you looking forward to some Coco matchmaking cutscenes? <laughs> what do you think of the bosses so far? The platforming and we haven't really seen anything new regarding cyberspace in today's video at least 
Um, but yeah, um, let me know what you guys think about that and the combat difficulty and whatnot. But yeah, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that bell. Make sure to check out the non sonic channel. The link will be in the description. But that's all I have to say right now. So, Remy out.